the, the word that we need to give time to. So this morning we're going to complete our study in Romans chapter 10. And uh, the theme of this 10th chapter has been the ignorance of Israel. Um, the key was seen in verses 2 and 3 of, of this chapter that we looked at a few weeks ago. It says, For I can testify about them, and talking about the Israelites, Paul says in the Jews, that they are zealous for God, but their zeal is not based on knowledge, since they did not know the righteousness of God and sought to establish their own. They did not submit to God's righteousness. And that's what we've seen um, throughout this. Paul is trying to explain why Israel rejected the gospel. They had their own anticipated coming of, of what they would be their Messiah. They had their own understanding of what they expected out of God instead of taking <laughs> the full context of what, what we see in Scripture. And so Paul's been presenting the gospel of salvation by grace through faith. In this chapters 9, 10, and 11, he's answering the questions of how did the Jews miss this? <laughs> Why did they miss, uh, miss Christ? Why did they reject him? Why did they not understand who he was? Um, if, if this good news of Christ, that the salvation is true, then how come God's chosen people that he'd given the law and the prophets to for centuries, how did they miss it? And so that's what he's been explaining over, over this time. And, um, you know, the, the Apostle John said that Jesus came into his own and his own uh, received him not. They rejected him, and Paul's explaining why that's the case. Um, and it's not because they didn't care about God. The Jews were, were uh, committed to a study of the Scripture and the Word and, and learning and memorizing the, the law and the old things. They were committed to that. They had, like he said, that zeal in verse 2 for that, but it wasn't according to knowledge. It wasn't, it wasn't understanding. Uh, they were missing the understanding of the Word of God. And, uh, so they sought God in, in their, the wrong way. Uh, sometimes people do that. Ever had somebody... To pull a, a uh, verse out of the Bible out of context and try to use it for something that it doesn't mean, <laughs> you know. Well, well, this verse says this. Yeah, but the whole passage says that, not this. <laughs> and and we have to be careful. And the Jews, that's kind of like doing that, going through and picking the happy parts. <laughs> God delivered us from our enemies. God did this for us. God did this for us. God has never stopped to answer the question of why did God have to keep delivering you from your enemies? It was because of disobedience that the prophets told you about time and time and time again. It's like we skip over those parts because they're no fun. <laughs> we just talk about the happy things. <laughs> and, and, and that was a little bit, you know, we, we go into something and we have a perspective or we have an anticipation of what we think this is going to be like. And we go in with those rose-colored glasses or our own um, perspective. And we can't study God's Word that way. We have to, to study God's Word in context of God's Word and, and what is there. Um, John 3.19 said, This is the verdict. Light is coming to the world. But the people love darkness instead of light because their deeds are evil. Everyone who does evil hates light and will not come into light for the fear that their deeds will be exposed. Um, why do people disbelieve? Why do they disbelieve this scripture? Because they love their evil. They love their sin. They love, they love that stuff. Uh, they don't want to have it exposed. Um, I'm okay as long as I don't have to change anything. <laughs> I want to do things my way. And uh, they rejected the gospel because the gospel sheds light. And as the gospel sheds light, the Holy Spirit convicts people of their sin and uh, we don't like that we we like to be told everything yeah you're good <laughs> you're good all right so well it's in the old testament the jews had it in the old testament in a variety of places i'll look briefly at one of them in isaiah chapter 30 and isaiah is preaching to him he says for these are rebellious people again talking about the israelites the the these are rebellious people, deceitful children, children unwilling to listen to the Lord's instruction. They say to the seers, 
see no more visions. And, and to the prophets, give us no more visions of what's right. Tell us pleasant things. Prophesy illusions. Leave this way. Get off this path. Stop confronting us with the Holy One of Israel. That's, that's what he's saying. He says, the people were like, don't, don't give us that. All of that fire and brimstone stuff. Don't tell us about God's judgment or his anger against our sin or any of that stuff. Don't tell us that. We don't want to hear it. Just tell us what's, you know, what we like to hear. And uh, unfortunately, we see that happen sometimes in churches even today. We talk about the love of Jesus and, and God's compassion and, and all of those wonderful attributes. But if we don't understand why we need God's love and compassion is because of our sin and all of our things and we don't get a full picture of God. We don't want to talk about that. Don't talk about hell. That's bad for attendance. Don't talk about, you know, people don't want to hear. Don't, don't tell people that they can't do this or can't do that according to the Bible because they might not come back. Well, no, the truth is the truth. <laughs> and, and we're to share the truth. The Jews would rather hear the lies and the truth. They wanted the pleasant things um, about God. And like I said, that I read the passage out of Isaiah, but we see that from, from Job and in the Proverbs and, and the prophet Joel and others and different and proclaiming this. The New, New Testament's no different about um, Israel. Jesus, when he, was, he came in and he pronounced, he, he pronounced judgment against um, cities in Galilee, and he said in Matthew 11, Woe to you, Chores and woe to you, Bethsaida, for if the miracles that were performed in you had been performed in Tyre and Sidon, they would have been they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I will tell you, it will be more bearable for Tyre and Sidon on the day of judgment than for you. And for you, Capernaum, will you be lifted up to the heavens? No, you will go down to Hades. For if the miracles that were performed in you had been performed in Sodom. It would remain to this day. But I tell you that it will be more bearable for Sodom on the day of judgment than for you. These were cities where Christ had ministered and done stuff and healing and incredible things. And they had rejected him. And the point was, you have seen the miracles of God right in front of you. And yet you reject me. <laughs> and so the judgment against you is going to be worse than even those pagan places that you talk bad about because they didn't know the truth but you know the truth and it's right here in front of you and you're rejecting it and so that was pointing over and over again all through the old so it's in old testament new testament we see we see both of those the, the condemnation or the judgment against israel and why it's because of their disobedience or their unbelief in the word of god so this morning we're going to cover the last two elements we've been going through these different uh reasons or facets of the ignorance of of the jews the ignorance of who god is his righteousness the second they were ignorant of the provision of christ of what his death on the cross meant they were ignorant of the place of faith that that we we are we are get salvation by grace through faith it's not by works it's not by this stuff that we do so we've missed those this morning the last two elements is what we'll look at the fourth one is israel was ignorant of the proportions of salvation they didn't understand the extent of salvation and what do i mean by perform, proportions or extent that it was for everyone not just for them it was for everyone that they were to get so romans chapter 10 beginning in verse 11 then is where we're at and it says concerning this salvation the prophets who spoke of of the grace that was to come to you, searched intently and with the greatest care, trying to find out the time and circum. Circ I am in Peter. I am in. I'm reading. I'm reading out of Peter chapter ten. You're like, that's not what my Bible says. I'm like, this isn't the right thing. <laughs> I said on my Bible turned to where Gary read earlier. Romans, chapter ten, beginning in verse eleven. Sorry. As the scripture says, anyone who trusts in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. 
For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in one whom they've not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can they preach unless they are sent? As it's written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. But not all Israelites accepted the good news. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our message? Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. But I ask, did not they hear? Of course they did. Their voice has gone out into all the earth, their words to the earth, the end of the world. We're going to stop right there, and we'll catch up with, with what all and unpack that. The Jews had a difficult time accepting this. Uh, the message was given, Paul saying the message is given to the Jews and the Gentiles, both. It, it's meant for everyone uh, that's going on. And the, the Jews were still kind of caught in this deal that we're God's chosen people. You know, it's for us. The Messiah is for us. Everything's for us. And God said, Paul was reminding them of some of the Old Testament passages and things. He says, God never said it was just for you. He said that salvation was going to come through you. That means through the lineage of Abraham. That was the original promise to Abraham. That all nations would be blessed through you. Not just your descendants. But out of your descendants would come the Messiah. And out of him would be blessings for everyone. And Paul's saying, did, did you not read it? <laughs> Did you not understand that? He didn't say it just once. God said that several times in the Old Testament. And so it, uh, but they were ignorant of the extent of the saving faith that it included everybody that would call upon the name of the Lord. Uh, Paul continues this pattern that we've seen all through chapter 10 as he's explaining this to them. He goes back and what's he do? He quotes the Old Testament because that's what they stand on. We know the law. We know the law of Moses and the prophets and all these things of the Old Testament. You know, we're God's chosen people. We know all these things. He says, great. So every time he proves a point, he goes back and he quotes one of those and says, remember? Remember this? Or is this the part you skipped over because you didn't like it? <laughs> but it's all here. And so he's talking about that. Isaiah 28 Paul quotes in verse 11, Isaiah 28, 16. Anyone who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Another translation says, whoever believes on him shall not be disappointed. The salvation is available to anyone who trusts in Jesus. Whosoever is a word we love to use. Whosoever believes in him, right? Whosoever. Doesn't matter who, what, where they grew up. Doesn't matter where they live. Doesn't matter how much money they have or don't have. Or doesn't matter which, you know, which religion they started with and they grew up with in life. If they come to the Lord Jesus Christ and they receive him, they believe in him, they're part of the whosoever. <laughs> they come out of that religion. They come out of that pagan background. They come out of wherever they come out of and they receive Jesus Christ. Their salvation is, is as valid as as anyone else's. Whosoever um, is who it's for. Um, that we go through. The, the only barrier to salvation is someone's personal rejection. Now, now the Jews were in judgment. A lot of them were happening with that thing. But, but there were Jews that came to Christ who received him, but as the whole and the leadership rejected Christ. When I say the Jews rejected him, I meant, that's what I mean, as a whole. But there were always individuals that came. There was always that remnant, the, the scripture speaks of, of those that would come to Christ. Um, it's not a, a racial thing or a cultural thing or anything. It's whosoever believes in him. God is not a Jewish God. <laughs> He's a God for everyone. And the people, the Jewish people struggled with that. One of the great pictures in the Old Testament is given to us about the Jews' dislike or hatred maybe for other folks was the book of Jonah. 
That's what the whole book of Jonah is about, right? God comes to Jonah and says, hey, I want you to go down the road and preach here to Nineveh. Preach the, preach the message of repentance and forgiveness to them. And what does Jonah do? Oh, I don't want to do that. Why? They're pagans. They're Gentiles. They're, I, don't, I don't want those folks to get saved. We don't like them. <laughs> right? What did he do? Jonah wanted so bad to go, not go to Nineveh, he went the other direction. Right? He went in the opposite direction, got on a boat, was going to sail away. <laughs> we know what happened to Jonah, right? The storm came. He says, oh, God is after me. Throw me overboard. He does. He's swallowed up by this great fish. He spit out on the shore a few days later. And what's he end up doing? He goes to Nineveh. Now, this is one thing that Jonah did understand. He did understand that God is so great and gracious and merciful. That if he preached that message, those people that he didn't like were going to be saved. Because God is that big. <laughs> and he recognized that. That's why he didn't want to go preach that message. He was afraid. He was afraid instead of being judged, that whole city would come to Christ. Or come yeah, and, and repentance. Right? And that's what happened. He went and he preached the message eventually. And that's what happened. But that shows you a picture of how much the Jews did not like the Gentiles. They, a, a Jew wouldn't, a good Jew wouldn't walk into the home of a Gentile. They wouldn't use the utensil that a, a Gentile had touched. Might, that, that, that they wouldn't anything, have anything to do with that stuff. They wouldn't buy food from a Gentile merchant. They wouldn't want to desecrate themselves with that. It, it was horrible. And so we see that and Jonah is a perfect picture of, of the dis, disdain that the Jews had for the others. Um, but then, so Paul tells them in verse 2, and it hits them hard. He says, for there's no difference, or verse 12, there's no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and blesses all who call on him. <laughs> the Jews were looking for a national deliverer, not a universal savior that came. They were looking for a Jewish kingdom, not one that included the Gentiles. They didn't see that the Lord would be the same for all on that. Whosoever, all who call on the name of the Lord, whosoever believes, those were hard things for the Jews to deal with. And it said it's not anything new. We, so we've seen passages in the Old Testament and the New Testament. God has always been the God of whosoever. Whosoever seeks him. Who whosoever calls on the name of the Lord. So the emphasis is on the extent of the salvation, proportion, that it is for everyone. Paul reinforces that proportion in verses 14 and 15. How then can they call on the one that they not believed in? And how can they believe in the one whom they not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it's written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. Paul says, did you forget God's plan? It was given to you in the Old Testament. We That salvation comes from the Jews, but it's for everyone to be shared. But instead, you've got your club here. Who's going to go tell those people? We're not going to tell them. We don't want them to get saved. This is our club, right? It's like we, we like our little group. We don't want to bring those folks in here. And he's like, do you remember the scripture? How beautiful are the feet who wants to bring the good news? He's reminding them again of an Old Testament passage. How can they hear unless someone is sent and preaches? You, you guys are, are having your club, and instead you're supposed to be sending people out to tell them about God in this. And he's reminding them of that. Uh, but there's a problem with that. Verse 16 tells us, but not all Israelites accepted the good news. They didn't receive that good news from Christ and, and to share. And so they did not respond by sharing it. And then the last point, Israel was ignorant of the predictions of Scripture. This point is already woven through some of the other points that we've looked at, so, but just briefly on that. Starting back at verse 5, we, we begin to see 
that the Jews really didn't know their Old Testament. Every time Paul quotes Scripture to them and explains to them, you missed it, you missed it here, you missed it here. So we continue in verse 19. It says, Paul says, again I ask, did Israel not understand? Didn't, didn't they know that the gospel message was for the whole world? That's his point. Once again, he quotes the Old Testament prophets, and this time he quotes Moses. Right? I, mean, I mean, if you want to influence the Jews, there's nobody more powerful than quoting Moses. Right? He's their hero. And, and so Paul quotes Moses from Deuteronomy chapter 32, and he says, I will make you envious by those who are not a nation. I will make you angry by a nation that has no understanding. What's he talking about? Who are those that are not a nation? The Gentiles. The Jews are God's chosen people, God's nation. All the others, right? There's us and all the others. It's all of them. And he says, Moses said back in Deuteronomy that God said, I will make you envious by those who are not a nation. I will make you angry by a nation that has no understanding. Those people that don't have the law and the prophets don't have all this stuff. If you reject me, I'm going to go to them. That's what God's telling them right there. When you continue to reject me, I'm going to take my message to them. <laughs> and you're not going to like it because <laughs> you want to have a private club. But this is for everyone. And so that's what we're going to do. The Jews had given their, uh, the Jews had, had lost their way over and over. We know we see that rebellion in their history and the stuff that happens. And, and, uh, and in that, he says, I'm, I'm not going to keep doing this forever. I'm going to go. I'm going to go outside of this, directly to them. They they should have repented. They should have seen the truth of the gospel. Paul is reminding them: you should have known this. It was Moses told you this was going to happen, if you didn't do something about it. Um, kept saying in in Matthew, Jesus made it clear to them in Matthew chapter one twenty one and and twenty two. Remember when he was telling the parables and he, and he says, "I'm going to turn from you for." For other people, you don't want to come to the banquet? I'll, I'll send my servants out into the highways and the byways and, and, and bring in all of these people that are lame and blind and all the rest of them, I'm going to bring them in here. He's telling the Jews, if you're going to reject me and not come to the wedding banquet, the banquet's prepared. So I'm going to just send people out to other places and invite everyone in. I don't care if they have on the right wedding clothes. I don't care if they have all the right. I'm going to invite them in. That's what he's telling them in that passage. When, when, when Jesus talks to them in Matthew 21 and 22 or in Luke 14, um, and he's talking about that. Um, when he was in uh, Matthew 21, he's talking about, uh, you want to kill my servant? Remember when the, the, with the vineyard? He said that he sent, there was a vineyard, and he sent the, the servants who were the prophets, and they killed them. And so he, then he sent his son, and they killed him. And he says, you, you guys keep doing this pattern. We're going to go around there. The, the gospel message is for everyone. And so then in verse 20, then hey, if you're not going to quote Moses to the Jews, who else could be really, really influential? Paul says, how about Isaiah? <laughs> All right, another one of your heroes. So Moses represents the law, and Isaiah represents the prophets. He says, so, so here's the law and the prophets, and they both say the same thing. He quotes Isaiah 65, 1, I was found by those who did not seek me. I revealed myself to those who did not, did not ask for me. The Jews had been seeking God, studying all their, all their life, right? He says, I'm found by those who didn't seek me. They didn't have the law. They didn't have the prophets, the Gentiles. But I'm found by those. I'm found by those who didn't ask me. Why? Because he says, I'm going to take my message to them and share that to everyone. God, God was found by those who didn't seek him. They were um, the Jews that had a zeal for the Lord, but without knowledge. He's going to say, so I want to go invite those in. And show them my grace and my love and my salvation. And I'm going to set you aside for a while. I set you aside. That, we, that's still the same. True for, for the Jews as a whole, to even today. 
That's going to change. We're going to see part of that in chapter 11. But he says, you've rejected me and hung over and over and over and over again. Not just when they crucified Christ, but for thousands of years through the Old Testament, we saw the Jews turn against God, go away from him, go to a pagan culture. God would bring them back. Then they would do it again. And he'd bring them back and do it again. He says, this message is for everyone. <laughs> and so suddenly, and we see the growth of the church in the book of Acts, especially starting in, in chapter 8, that all of a sudden he goes from the Jews and then it explodes into the world, into the Gentiles. And it's all about Paul's missionary trips and all the other places around the world that they went to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. He says, I'm setting you aside for a while. He's going to come back to the Jews. But not now. Their rebellion and rejection was enough. He says, the gospel message is for everyone. And so now, that's why you see in the churches today, in Christianity today, you don't have a lot of folks that are from a Jewish heritage that have come to Christ. At some time, that will, some of that's going to change. But why? It went to the Gentiles. Thank goodness, or we wouldn't be there. We wouldn't be, uh, we wouldn't be Christians in that. God's found them, but those who didn't seek him. At verse 65, then he quotes one more, the next verse. Paul goes on and quotes is Isaiah 65 too. The very next verse out of Isaiah that he turns around and quotes to them. In, uh, it's in verse, uh, verse 20 of Romans when he quotes that. He says, but concerning Israel, he says, all day long I have held my hands out to a disobedient and obstinate people. I didn't just invite you once. I have constantly held my hands out to receive you. And you have rejected me. All day long, Isaiah says, I've held my hands out to a disobedient and obstinate people. <laughs> that was the Jews in a nutshell for that. And then he uh, Paul says, you're ignorant of the scriptures. If you'd known the prophecy of Moses, if you'd known the prophets, prophetic words of Isaiah, you would have understood when Jesus came, that he was the fulfillment of God's promises and his Messiah, all of that. But you rejected that. And so we see that last verse then of, of chapter Romans chapter 10. And, uh, and it, it is... Uh, and one more quote then. He says, This that was spoken by the prophets, it's happening. Therefore, this is the Messiah and this is the true message uh, that's happening. All day long I've held up my hands to disobedient and obstinate people. This is happening now. God is turning away from you. He's setting you aside and he's reaching out to a Gentile world because you have refused to do that. Conclusion? Well, this is a profound message in chapter 10. Israel's lost. Israel is set aside. Excluded from salvation as a, as a nation, as a whole. Again, individuals can come to Christ, and they do. <laughs> Some of the individuals. But God has moved beyond the Jews to make up a church of all people from all tongues, of all nations, from around the world. Why was Israel lost? Because they were ignorant of God's person and the, the provision of Christ and the place of faith in religion, the proportion of, of salvation, all of those things. They should have been able to see it. It was in the scriptures. That's what Paul's saying. You should have been able to see it. Is this ignorant unbelief of Israel permanent? No, and like I said, we'll see that foreshadowed in chapter 11 that some of that will change. And we're glad for that, that it will change. <laughs> In time. Well, let me close with a little story here. I was reading a book by Dr. Charles Feinberg. Uh, he was a seminary professor. And uh, he shared a story from a preacher in Scotland. And the preacher said one time he was speaking and someone asked permission to speak when he was done. And, and so he lighted the gentleman up and the, and the gentleman said, Friends, I do not believe what this man has been talking about. I do not believe in hell, in a judgment, or in a God, for I have never seen any of them. 
He continued talking that way for a while, and someone else says, can, can I speak? He said, sure. Brings him up. And he says, friends, you say there's a river running not far from this place. The river Clyde. There's no such thing. It's not true. You tell me there are grass and trees growing around me where I now stand, and there's no such thing. It's also untrue. You tell me there are a great many people standing here before me. And again, I say this is not true. There's no one standing here except myself, and I am here alone. I suppose you wonder what I'm talking about. He says, for friends, I was born blind. I've never seen any of you. And while I talk, it only shows I am blind. Or I would see such things. And he turned to the other man and he says, and you as an unbeliever, the more you talk, the more expresses your own blindness. <laughs> Israel was blind and went around saying it doesn't exist, it isn't so. Not this salvation for everyone. I pray that you don't have that ignorance in regard, in that regard, because that would condemn you to an eternity in hell, to reject Christ, to to, to say, I, don't, I haven't seen it, so I don't believe it. <laughs> if you know Christ, I pray that you don't allow yourself to be ignorant of all the rich blessings that God has for you. I'm a Christian, okay. I believe in Jesus. I believe all the things about Jesus. That is wonderful. Don't let yourself be blind to what it means to live an abundant Christian life. Don't be blind to the abundance of, of blessings that are flowing in, our, in this world to us. We live and there's some difficult things that happen in this life, in this world. But also, don't allow our ignorance to miss the blessings that are here for us. The scriptures promise those things for us too. The comforts and, and of a relationship with him, an ability to, to speak with him. That we should be we should speak with the Lord often enough that we're comfortable in our conversations with him, that we can share anything with him. If you're not in a place where you can do that, if you're not in a place where where you enjoy reading the Word of God, if you're not in a place in that relationship, then you're being blinded to some of the blessings that are right here before us and around us. And don't allow that happen, even if you know Christ, to live a life that, that's blind in understanding the, the full abundance of the life we have in Him. Don't you allow yourself to be caught in the ignorance of, of the God that holds out His hands to you every day to increase the relationship with you to better that relationship. A good, good father. <laughs> Father, we thank you for this message. And uh, that we would maybe have some understanding of, as we've been going through this time, of, of trying to understand why Israel rejected Christ. Why they rejected you in that. That, that you had given them the law and the prophets and all of these things. And we look and we say, well, how could they reject Christ? Father, my prayer is that in our own pride, in our own arrogance, in our own things, that we would not be just like the Jews and reject Christ because we think we have our own way figured out to heaven. We think we have our own understanding of how this all works. But instead, Father, that we would be humbled before you and receive the salvation in Christ, the grace that you offer that we would receive by faith. And for those that know Christ, Father, that we would, we would not, we would not just that we would not live um, in a timid way, but we would live in a bold way, experiencing all the blessings that you provide for us. That we would, that we would desire to grow in our relationship with you each and every day. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen.